Hello everyone and welcome to Mike Burr Thomas, episode 8. At the end of episode 7, the light bulb was just beginning to go on in our man's head. Yes, Lola wants to speak to the money mule because it's a private account and she wants to be certain of who she's sending money to. After Denise had explained to our man that Lola wanted to talk to the account holder to be certain of who she was sending money to, our man managed almost three quarters of an hour before calling Denise again. Hello again, darling. How are you doing, honey? Darling, which bit of... Oh, you, you're starting to sound desperate because you keep calling me. Are you having trouble understanding? No, honey, I'm just checking up on you. OK, well, I'm fine, thanks. And I was fine when you called an hour ago. OK, honey. Did you, did you have dinner already? Yeah, I did have dinner to save you asking. It was a ham salad and yes, it was yummy. Have you had dinner yet? I know I haven't had dinner yet, but I'll, I'll, I will in a few minutes. Good, because I think you should eat something. Yeah, I'm just trying to know how my beautiful woman is doing, you know. Your beautiful woman is doing fine as she was about an hour ago. Mm, I see. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just hoping I'm praying to be with you anytime soon, so we can spend a lovely time together. Yeah, well, I'm sure it won't be very long now, darling. Yeah, I, I believe so. And as that man, did you, did you, have you managed you, to get that? You saw, man? I said, have you managed to get that man or woman's number so that he or she can call Lola? No, I tried, I tried to call just now, and they said that if it's possible, they would let me know. Okay, well, I'm sure they can find somebody who can claim to be him. Shouldn't be that hard. Yes, honey. Shouldn't yeah. be that hard. So that at least you and Lola can go to the Minecraft store in the morning and send it, right? Exactly, darling. Okay, honey. Lola should, Lola should always pick her phone so in case... She's being called. Well, I don't know what Lola's doing because the children will be home from school now. She's probably cooking dinner. Okay, honey. No problem. I love you so much, okay? Yeah, I know you do, darling. Yeah, were you able to eat much when you went out this afternoon? Sorry, say that again, darling. I said, did you eat much when you went out this afternoon? I went out this morning, darling. We went out for lunch. Yeah, were you able to eat much? No, I had three stomach upsets and a broken ankle. I couldn't eat anything. What do you think? Mm, you say what? I said yes, of course. We had a really nice lunch. Oh, I see. That's good. It's good to know that you're happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy, darling. I think we had a... Didn't I tell you we had a ham sandwich? Yeah. Because me talking to you always makes me happy. Oh, yeah, you, I, you, I don't you know, sound delirious, I don't darling. Know what being, I, don't know what, I don't know how I'm going to feel when we're together. No, neither do I, darling. You know? But I'm sure you'll feel something when you get here. You say what? I said, I'm sure you'll feel something when you get here. Yeah, honey, and I can't wait. Uh, I trust you, okay? I trust you and I love you. I know that you're going to keep to your words to do everything possible to make sure that I get home so we can be together. Yeah, well, why do you think I wouldn't? You know, I said, I can't wait for you to do everything possible to make sure we'll be together. And darling, it's you that's got to do something. It's you that's got to get Mr. Abule to phone Lola and nothing to do with me. Okay, honey. I'll try, okay? I'm going to get Mr. Abule to phone Lola, okay? Yeah, you do that, darling, because that'll make it all much quicker and much easier, won't it? Okay, honey. Immediately, Mr. Abule talk to Lola. I'm going to let him, okay? 
Okay. Well, if you drop me a text or, or or text both of us so that she knows to expect the call, because as I say, she could be busy this evening because the kids will be home from school. Okay, I wish you can give me a particular time for me to tell them to call her. Well, how would I know, darling? I don't know. Okay. So I just... Just, te just text out. her, darling. Just text her and, like you've been doing and tell her, tell her that he's going to call so she's expected, so she knows to keep an eye on her phone. Okay, honey, okay. And that, that really brilliant of you. You're very smart. Hello, darling. At least one of us has got to be, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Okay, honey. I love you. Kiss, yeah. kiss. I know you do, darling. Love her, please. Okay then, bye for now. Bye. Yeah. Am I the only one that thinks our man was sounding very depressed because he hadn't yet managed to get his hands on that money? The money mule, or at least someone pretending to be the money mule, did try to text Lola the previous evening, but she was busy on another bait, so she ignored him. Obviously, her children needed her attention. Denise woke up the next morning to messages from our man, Good morning to the prettiest woman I've ever seen. How was your night, honey? Good morning, darling, said Denise when I'd had enough tea to be compost mentis. I was woken up by thunder and couldn't get back to sleep. How was your night? And that was true. My night was fine, apart from the fact that I was thinking about you all night, honey. Did you take your coffee this morning? I don't drink coffee. Did you take yours? Yes! I took one cup already. You've got to admire the thrilling conversation that these scammers have. With your beautiful thoughts, relaxing my heart. How sweet, said Denise. What are your plans for today, honey? I'm not sure. I usually change the bed and do the washing on Thursday morning. And just to be clear, this was actually a Wednesday. I got confused. What are your plans? Aren't you working today? I have five hours of daytime rest today, honey. I don't have any plans. Then waiting for you to get things done so that we can be together. You told me that I need to let my woman do her job. Lola just rang. Said Denise, the kids have left for school and she's at home if Mr. Abuli can call her. Oh, OK, honey. I'll let them know so that she can talk to Mr. Abuli. I just passed the information, he said. What do you like doing for fun most of the day, honey? Then he gave her a phone number. Honey! Give Lola that phone number to call so that she can talk to Mr. Abule. They told me they called her, but she's not taking calls. Then he tried calling Denise, but I was upstairs doing some ironing, so I ignored him. How are you doing, honey? Are you busy with something? I was outside in the garden. I've just finished lunch to save you asking a sausage roll and salad, and yes, it was yummy. Then in reply to him saying, what do you like doing for fun most of the day, honey? She said, I spend most days gyrating round the garden. It's such fun. What do you do for fun most of the day? Denise went out for a while with a friend while I went out. And when I came home, there was a missed call from our man and then a message. That's yummy, he said, not answering her when she'd asked him what he did for fun most of the day. Honey, I think Lola is making everything hard right now. I think you should keep your money and don't send it any more. Tell Lola not to worry about sending the money because she's giving me about it. We should follow instructions giving to us and not Lola requesting for someone number. I love you. Kisses and hugs to you. And the reason that he'd said that was because he'd spoken to Lola. Hello. Hello. Yes, why don't you pick my call? Yeah, uh, I want to take it, but uh, I think the signal is having some connections issues. Okay, you didn't give me that guy's number. <clears throat> yeah, he said he'd been, they've been trying to call you and uh, maybe you're not taking your call. Don't be an idiot. I don't know, that's why. Don't be an idiot. Nobody called me. Okay. Because me, I've been, I've been having headache on, on the issue, so I just said I should just uh, calm down, maybe uh, everything will be in place. My friend, give me the number. 
Yeah, since the company is not giving me, uh, Mr. Since they give me, uh, Mr. Uh, Bullish number to send to you, I sent the number that you can reach them on. But I don't know why, why I didn't call them or why haven't they called you. Uh, okay, then. I'm on it. I will not send any money. It's up to you. It's so no, simple. No problem. Okay, then. I will talk to my mother in law. I'll tell. I will tell her the situation. Was you able to was you able to get the uh, four thousand eight hundred back from the monogram? My friend, um, are you in the position to put conditions and questions? No, I'm. I'm asking you. You don't have to ask. To you don't have to ask for anything. You are just a stupid man, okay. you are just an idiot, and you are wasting my time. And my mother-in-law wants me to solve the problem. I cannot solve the, pro the problem because you don't give me the f number. Do you understand? The number, the, I don't think, I don't, I don't think the number is that important. I don't, I don't. Think it's very important. Don't, don't be an idiot. How old are you? How old are you? How old are you? Our increasingly frustrated scammer finally gave Lola a number that he claimed was the money mule. It was the same number he'd already given her. And this team either didn't have the brains or the wherewithal to find someone else to answer and pretend to be the money mule. So I know that you're going to recognise the voice of the scammer that answered. Hello, is this Mrs Lola? Yes. Yes, this is Mr. Obule speaking. No, this is not Mr. Obule. This is the guy from the company. I know your voice. Uh, this is Mr. Obule speaking, Mr. Lola. No, this is Jason or Jamie. I know your voice. I'm in love with your voice. No, nah, no, nah, this is not. This is not Jason. Nah, this, this is, is Jason. Jason. This is Jason. This is not Jason, trust me. This, this is not Jason. Jason. This is Mr. Obule speaking. No, this is not Mr. Obule. Come on. Why, no. why are you making fun of me? Are you in the mood for jokes? I'm not, making, I'm not making fun of you. I'm not making fun of you. Hey, Jason. Jason. You know, Jason said you want to speak to me since for the past few days. Nah, you are not Mr. Light Obule. <laughs> so what am I going to go tell my clients right now? Because this is costing a lot hey, of trouble. Hey, don't keep your nose with your fingers. Come on, who do you think are you talking to? I told you yesterday I'm a Romanian. You cannot trick me. Mm -hmm. I'm not tricking you, madam. Hey. Hey, Jason. By the way, I want to meet you. Huh? I'm oh, sorry, Mister. This is not Jason. I'm telling you, this is Mister Abule. No, this um, is not Mister Abule. If you want to speak to Jason, I can always connect you to him. I can transfer him to you right now. No, this is not Jason. <laughs> but you are funny. You are very funny. You like me too. You like Mr. Jason, or you like me? No, I don't like you. I, I mean, I like you, but you are Mr. Jason. You are not. You are not that guy like. No, me. no, 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 madam, no, madam, not Mr. Jason. Trust me, not Mr. Jason. But Mr. No. Jason, I'll be speaking to you right now. No. So where's the misunderstanding coming from, madam? Jason, stop playing games. Please. Madam, this is not Mr. Jason. I can I can tell Mr. Jason to call you. Since Mr. Jason is in Canada, how come you are calling me from his number? This is a company number, madam. What can I do to make you believe me, madam? I don't believe because you. This is taking this is taking longer than usual. And everyone is waiting for you and saying you want to talk to me. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. You are playing games with me and I don't like it, honestly. I'm not playing games, madam. I'm not playing no games with you, madam. 
Yes, you do. I'm just following instructions. I was still to call you. I was going to call you by 5 o'clock today. But now that I have the free time, I choose to call you now to send to you. So no, I, I want go back no, to my No, you are not Mr. Light. Come on. Stop playing games. I don't like it. I'm not playing games to you, madam. If you want to talk to Mr. Light, I can tell him to Mr. Mr. Jason, I can tell him to call you. You are playing games. No, now you speak to Mr. Light to bully from Ellsbury. I don't know how you find it hard to believe me, madam. And anyway, I just spoke to my client this morning. He said he would try to talk to me for the past few days. Which normally I don't do, madam. I don't speak on the phone. All I attend to is payment and invoice, madam. You know, but everyone is saying you want to talk to me. And it's causing a bit of trouble. That's okay. why you're speaking to me today. Okay. I went out for a couple of hours. And when I came home, those two calls with Lola had taken place. By then, we were starting to have enough of our man. So Denise said, Hello, darling. I went out with my friend Barbara. Lola rang when I got home. She said she's spoken to Mr. Booley and it's OK to send him money. She said he has a sexy voice. So she's on her way to collect me and we'll go to MoneyGram. OK, honey. What are you doing right now, honey? He said. But by then, of course, Denise had gone to the MoneyGram office. Hello, darling. We just got home. She said a bit later, I think I got it right this time. I've sent £2,000 to Mr Lighter Boulay. Lola did the same thing as before and she's put a photo of the receipt on here for me. They said Mr Boulay has to call the number on the receipt so he can claim the money. Obviously, at this point, I was hoping against hope that he might fall for it and phone the fake MoneyGram claim line. OK, honey, I'll let Mr Abouli know now, honey. I love you so much, honey. So we will wait for them to go pick the £2,000 before we proceed, honey. Thank you, honey. And then he started asking her for her address. Sender's name, Denise Singleton. Sender's address. Honey, you'll need to send me your address so that they'll use it to claim the money on MoneyGram. Denise gave him a made-up address. Oh, that's in Surrey. She added he has to phone the number on that receipt first. That's what they told me. Oh, OK, honey, honey. Sender's name? Denise Singleton. Sender's address. Is the address correct, honey? And then he asked her for the postcode. Denise made up a postcode. He repeated what she'd said. That's right, darling. OK, honey. But he has to phone that number first. I'll fold the information to them now, honey. Yes, he will. Did you have lunch? Don't you bother to read what I say, said Denise. Honey, I do read everything carefully and I know you went out with your friends. So you know what I had for lunch. My friend came after lunch and took me to Sainsbury's to do some shopping. I can't wait for us to be together any time soon, honey. Oh, that's nice. What did you shop? Oh, the level of conversation of this guy is just so scintillating. So Denise told him, it's a supermarket. I bought a tin of asparagus, a large sliced granary loaf, several tins of vegetables, some fresh fruit, some yoghurt, laundry liquid floor cleaner, bathroom cleaner, toilet rolls, kitchen rolls, some peanuts, three frozen dinners, a new frying pan and a large bag of crisps. By the way, did you have lunch? Oh, that's very beautiful, honey. I can't wait to eat your food, honey, and love you endlessly. Oh, yes, it's amazing what you can buy in supermarkets. Did you have lunch? Yes, I did, honey. What did you have? I took vegetable salad, honey. What will you have for dinner? Do you have anything interesting to talk about? Tell me which university you went to and what you studied. I'm not interested in endless, mindless talk about whether or not I've eaten. Just tell me when Mr. Abule's collected the money. Then I'll send the rest tomorrow. I like a man who can have an intelligent conversation. Our man disappeared for the rest of that evening. And I thought that was the end. Little did I know what was to come. Good morning to you, honey, he said the next morning. I wish you a beautiful morning with happiness all over your face and your loving and beautiful heart. Know that you're always in my heart and I will always cherish you. I want you know life together will be beautiful for us and we will not regret ever being together. Know that happiness is all I want and happiness is all I wish for you and for us. Ever since I meet you, I've been happy and I want this happiness to last a lifetime. Know that I want to talk a million things that means nothing. And I want to laugh with you on meaningless things. I want to love you non-stop. 
Tell me more about your education life. My education life was not an easy task, but I chose to focus because I saw the importance. I'm not asking you for a sob story, said Denise. You're an experienced contractor on an oil rig. You must have been to university. I asked which university you went to and what you studied. As Mr. Abouli phoned that number so he can collect the money. Once he's collected it, I'll send some more. But I need proof that he's collected the first lot. Could you tell him to send me a photo of himself holding the money, please, so I know he has it? OK, I will. I went to PFH, Private University of Applied Sciences in Germany. OK, and what did you study there? I studied accountancy at the old Guildford Technical College. It's gone now. After I graduated, I worked for a firm of accountants in Guildford while I was taking all my accountancy exams. Then I worked for a small company for a few years until I had my son. Then I set up my own business with my late husband. How did you come to work on rigs? I studied industrial engineering. Master, studium. That was a beautiful experience you must have had. What do you mean? I took more courses online because I have love for drilling of crude oil. When you first left university or recently? Asked Denise. I mean, you working for the company and having your son then later owning private business. It was what I wanted and it was nice being at home when my children were small. It's been many years ago, he said. How long ago? Asked Denise. Oh, that's beautiful. Watching the kids grow. Like 20 years ago. But before then, I've been studying and taking out classes and also practical. Is your business still active? And what kind of business do you have? Where did you work when you first graduated? Asked Denise. I'm sure I've told you, darling, I'm retired and I was an accountant. I work with Shell Oil Company. That was the first ever company I worked with in the 90s. Remember that? 1990 was 33 years ago. They're very kind people and always take care of their works. Did I ask you how old you are? Said Denise. I know you told me you're retiring. How old are you? Ladies first, said our scammer. No, said Denise. I asked you. Are you going to make something up when I've told you how old I am? No, I will not make anything up. Just wanting to follow the general law, saying ladies first. OK, so if you aren't going to make something up, you can answer the question, please. How old are you? The general law is that if a lady asks you a question, it's polite to answer. I'm 67 years, he managed finally. OK, I'm 75. So what did you do before you went to university? Remember, you would have been about 34 in 1990. What about you, he asked. I did other job in the oil field. I did pipeline fittings and connections. I also did welding and scaffoldings. Top marks to him there for thinking quickly. I went to school, said Denise. So you worked for several years before you decided to go to university. I've been working all my life and I'm not a man who settled for less. So you worked for several years before you decided to go to university. Why is it so hard to get you to give a straight answer? I told you where I went and what I did when I graduated. It's like talking to a kid who doesn't really understand what they're saying instead of an educated, experienced oil rig worker. I'm going to go and do some work in the garden. Don't forget to tell Mr. Abouli to send me a photo. Lola's free after lunch, so she can take me back to the money ground place. I really don't understand what you mean. He said, I just talked to Mr. Abouli and he said that he called MoneyGram and MoneyGram told him that you, the sender, needs to go back to the store and get a reference number because you're the only one who can give him the reference number. Now, he might have called the real MoneyGram, but he certainly didn't call the number on that fake MoneyGram receipt because he certainly wouldn't have been told that if he had. Ah, oh, said Denise coming downstairs and realising he'd tried to call her. You tried to call me while I was upstairs putting my gardening clothes on. Yes, honey, I have an idea. Which is, said Denise, why don't you give Lola the money so she will send it with her phone to a bank account and you don't need to go to the bank because she told me she's having mobile banking to avoid all stress. Oh, that's a good idea, said Denise. I need to know Mr. Abouli has managed to collect what I sent him yesterday. The money issue is stressing me already, said our stress scammer. Mr. Abouli can't collect it. Why not? asked Denise. I do hope he hasn't stolen the money for himself. The company did ask me to send the money to him. Do you will need to go get the money back from MoneyGram and give Lola to send it with her mobile banking from her phone, said our ma'am. Oh, no, I can't do that, said Denise. It's been too long since I sent it. He has to collect it himself. 
she will just send all the total amount of £4,800 with her phone. No, I can't do that. Mr Aboli has to phone that number and collect the money, said Denise. He will not steal it, said our man. Then he can go and collect it. He phoned the money. Then he can collect it. I just talked to Mr Abouli. Then he said that he called Moneygram, and Moneygram told him that you, the sender, needs to go back to the store and get a reference number, because you're the only one who can give him the reference number. I don't believe him, said Denise. The company will not lie to me, said our man. He has to call that number to get the reference number. I don't have it. Tell him not to be lazy. I don't believe he's wrong. That's why I said you should go and get the money back from the store. And I'm going outside now, said Denise. He'll get the number when he phones them. I will not go and get the money back. He either rings them to get the reference number or he'll lose the money. My phone's ringing. OK, honey. A couple of hours later, Denise came back. Has Mr Abouli rung the number yet? If he doesn't ring the number and collect the money today, I'll go back to MoneyGram and you'll not get any money at all. I'm fed up with your ridiculous games. You gave me Mr Abouli's details to send the money to and I sent it. He can get off his lazy backside and go to the MoneyGram office in Aylesbury. And then he called Denise. Hello, darling. You are right, you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Right, what's going on? Why can't Mr. Abouli phone that number and go and collect the money? Yeah, it's the 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 money's giving Mr. Abouli a hard time picking it up from the money ground. You know, because he called he called the money ground office and he told them about the uh, situation and they told him that uh, you're the one in the right position to call and collect the the reference number for him to be able to pick up the money so uh, that's why I'm suggesting that you and Lola should go back and take the money back from MoneyGram and I'll send the account to you and Lola will use a phone to make a transfer, a mobile transfer. I think that would be more preferable and easier instead of you stressing your beautiful self. Darling, uh, Mr. Abouli is lying to you. He can't possibly have phoned that number because they told me very clearly that he has to phone that number to get the reference number. They didn't give it to me. I haven't got it. So he's lying to you. No. Yes, he, he is. Went to the I know he went perfectly. To the money well. Be quiet. So I know. I him. know. Be quiet. I know perfectly well that he's lying to you. They gave me that slip. They said he has to phone that number to get the reference number. They didn't give it to me. He has to phone that number, and he's lying to you. Uh, okay. That or you're um, lying to I, I, that or be quiet. That or you're lying to me. Either he's lying to you or you're lying to me. Only um, uh, I don't want us to argue over this course. No, there is no was... argument. He just has to phone that number and he has to stop lying to you. The money has um, been sent. Uh, the money has been sent and I am not going back to, to get it back again. You told me to send it to him. They gave me that slip. They told me he has to phone the number to get the reference number. If he's lying, then that's your problem because you're the one that's using the company. It's nothing to do with me. So sort it out and stop going on at me about it. No, Arnie. I want right, to did you understand? understand? Did you understand that? Sort it out. Either get Mr. Abouli to phone that number or phone it yourself. You've got a phone. Phone that number yourself. Get the reference number and give it to Mr. Abouli. Okay, Arnie. I don't have any issue with that. Good, so saying, just do it and stop going on at me. I am not going back to the MoneyGram office and I'm not getting that money back and Lola's not going to send you anything until you or Mr Abouli have gone and collected the number, that money. So one of you has to phone that number and you have to stop lying to me. I'm not stupid, darling. I know when I'm being lied to. And if you don't know when Mr Abouli is lying to you, then that's your problem. But one of you has to phone that number and 
get the reference number. Is that clear? Did you understand that, darling? Yeah, I understand, Your Honor. Good. So, so phone uh, that I'm number gonna... and then let me know when you've got the reference number. Yeah, I want to let you know something right now. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm waiting for your next excuse. Yeah, the 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 monogram they gave him a phone number for you to call for the sender to call and approve the transaction. That's what it told. No, they didn't. You've phone. just made up. You've just made up another story. I'm sick of your lies. Neither of you have phoned that number, have you? No. No, I knew you hadn't. Because, I knew you hadn't because they gram. will give you the reference number. No, MoneyGram, MoneyGram, right, MoneyGram gave Mr. Abuli another number for you to call. No, they didn't because that isn't what you told me before. You've just changed your story and you're telling no, me another I, lie. No, remember I told you that Mr. Abuli had made the call to MoneyGram and MoneyGram, they said the sender needs to call them. That's why they gave him a, a phone number for you to call. No, and that I is not. The phone number. That is not what you told me before. You told me that that MoneyGram had told him that I needed to give him the reference number. You've just changed your yes. story. Give me that bloody number yes. then. Give me the number. No. Give me yeah. the number. Okay, honey, I'll send the number to you. Right, and then when you've given me the fake number, you can tell Mr. Abuli that I know he's lying because I know that if he phones that number, he will be given the reference number. I don't have it. I'm not phoning them. And if he doesn't pull his finger out and phone that number himself, he's not getting his money. He will not get his money if he doesn't phone that number. Is that clear? Can you understand that, darling? Because I've had enough of your lies and I've had enough of Mr. Booley's lies. If he wants his money, he's got to phone that number. End of story. No argument to be had. No more discussion. Was that clear, darling? Did you understand that? Yes, I understand yeah, I you. you might have I'm, done, sending, yeah. I, I'm sending you the phone, the phone number right now. Right, as I've just said, and I'll say it again just in case you didn't understand, Mr. Abouli has to phone that number himself, he has to get the reference number, and he has to go and claim the money. I'm not phoning any number, and I'm not sending any more until he's phoned that number and gone and collected the money. I think that's clear enough, even for your dense brain to understand. I understand you, honey. Awesome, I thought you did. So get Mr. Bo Abouli to phone that number, because I know he hasn't. He's just lying to you, because they told me that he would get the reference number if he found it. So tell him to stop lying to you, and tell him to get his pull his finger out, phone that number, and get his backside down to the MoneyGram office in Aylesbury. Okay, honey, no problem. I'm sending the number right away. Awesome. I'm not phoning it. As I've just said, he has to phone that number and he has to get his ass down to the MoneyGram office in Aylesbury. But he has to phone that number and get the reference number first. Yeah, no problem. I, I, I'm sending you the number that MoneyGram sent that you should call, that you requested for, right? No, darling, I, I realise you're thick and I realise you're stupid and I realise you have trouble understanding plain English. So I'll say it once more. I will not, as in I will not, I'm not going to, I will not phone that number. Mr. Abule, you know, Mr. Abule, who lives in Aylesbury, Mr. Abule in Aylesbury, has to phone that number on the receipt. He has to pick up his phone, he has to dial the number on that receipt, and he has to get the reference number. They will give him the reference number if he phones that number. I will not phone any other number. Mr. Abouli has to do it. He has to phone the number on that receipt. They will give him the reference number. Then he can get his ass down to MoneyGram in Aylesbury, 
he can go to MoneyGram in Aylesbury and he can get the money. They will give him the money. Was that clear? I think I've said everything at least twice. So you should have understood that yes, by now. That, that, that's clear. That's awesome. Clear. So just do it and tell me when he's done it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, yes, awesome. Uh, yeah, goodbye. Goodbye. Will Mr. Abouli phone the fake claim line? Will he get his ass down to the MoneyGram office in Aylesbury? This and other questions will be raised and answered in the next thrilling episode, episode nine. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please like it. Please share it. Please comment down below. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in Mike Burr Thomas, episode nine.